Hello, this is Dr. Stanislav Henkin, a resident physician in internal medicine at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. And today, I'm joined by Dr. Sharon Hayes. Thanks, Dan. I'm professor of medicine and cardiovascular disease and co-investigator on the spontaneous coronary artery dissection registry at Mayo Clinic. Thank you, Dr. Hayes. Today, we're here to talk to you about our upcoming manuscript entitled Spontaneous Coronary Artery Dissection and its association with irritable connective tissue disorders. Dr. Hayes, can you tell us a little bit about SCAD? So SCAD um, is an important and emergingly more uh, common cause of acute coronary syndrome and sudden death, particularly in young women. So this is very distinct from atherosclerosis in that the endothelium is normal. These individuals do not have standard cardiovascular risk factors and their artery splits as opposed to a plaque rupture. It's important is in that historically we've thought that it was very common for individuals with SCAD to have a connective tissue disorder. And uh, so we explored this in this patient population. Thank you, Dr. Hayes. So what we did is we took a look at 116 people that were evaluated in the SCAD clinic and referred for medical genetics. As Dr. Hayes mentioned, the majority of these individuals were women and were in their 40s. What is also a very important finding of the study is that more than 40% of these individuals were found to have fibromuscular dysplasia on the imaging. Additionally, when they were evaluated in the medical genetics clinic, different physical exam findings, such as joint hypermobility, myopia, or translucent skin were very common. However, they're also common in the general population and by themselves do not lead into a specific diagnosis of connective tissue disorder. Of the 116 individuals who were evaluated in the medical genetics clinic, 59 of them underwent medical genetic evaluation with different gene panels. Importantly, only 15 tested positive for a mutation, and of the 15, only three received a diagnosis of connective tissue disorder. One individual was diagnosed with Marfan syndrome based on FBN1 mutation, and two individuals were diagnosed with vascular Ehlers-Danlos syndrome based on a mutation col 3 a one gene. So Dr. Hayes, based on the results of our study, what do you make of this? Well, I think it's an important study because this is the first study to systematically assess genetic mutations or the potential in this patient population, and we found that they were much less common than previously believed. So we have a lot of work to do to better understand the pathophysiology causes and to be able to predict outcomes in this young patient population with heart attack. We're hoping to do that by uh, through our registry as well as our DNA biobank and hopefully in the future whole exome sequencing. So stay tuned. Thank you for joining me today, Dr. Hayes. This is Dr. Stanislav Henkin, and we hope that this study adds an important value of your care for patients with SCAD.